Welcome to the behind the scenes documentary footage for Fantastic Fables. Filming on day one, our location was really dark. We really wanted to use this bar because it looks really vintage and it would fit our story and connection to our director. But sadly, it really was very dark and the footage was very noisy and we couldn't get the good focus on our character here. But it looked really nice. So we are very, very sad that it didn't work out. Yeah, the place, uh, the place was perfect, unfortunately. We didn't have the right equipment, that's why we started to shoot um, in a brighter location, which was our flat, uh, with similar scenario. Uh, actually, that made our transitions uh, easier and uh, give us a couple of new, fresh ideas. We tried to use nice pan effects, um, you can see that throughout, uh, similar to how um, Wes Anderson might set up his shots. He's quite famous for his 180 degree pans. Um, here we have our ghetto rig. Yeah, we try to use the similar shots to um, Wes Anderson style. So we build homemade uh, equipment, let's say, uh, some kind of stand for the stand for the for camera the, for the camera. And we, because we were um, in our private location, so we could have um, do whatever you wanted. We used different camera positions. And the outside shoots were obviously a lot easier because we shot during the day, so we didn't have any problem with lighting, whereas previously we did have to kind of fiddle around with household lights and stental lighting to try and get things bright enough. Because of the good lighting we had, we could uh, focus and frame really well on our characters. We could get a really good depth of field. The original footage that you can uh, see is really very pale because that's how we captured it using the Technicolors in a style. So it, it was really easy for us to set up the color palette in the end uh, for a very saturated look similar as, as Wes Anderson. At the same time we, we tried to use very bright colors but not many of them as uh, symbols. In this shot we're using this central framing. The colors that we try to use here were very carefully picked out for costume and for background. They all represent something in one way or another. The blue of uh, Magda's character's coat represents royalty. We have the red representing danger and Little Red Riding Hood, which is also seen with the apple that the fox is carrying and uh, mirrored in our um, reader's makeup and costume choices. For the stories which were, we took from the original Grimm's fairy tales are not, uh, we wanted to present them not straightforward, we wanted to make some twists to make them not that obvious, more modern, or maybe not place in any time, in any specific times. As you can see, our animal characters have been fully anthropomorphized so that they are now represented as more human than animal, whereas in the original stories they were represented the other way around. This deliberate so that we had more scope to actually open up our characters and have a bit more fun with them and adapt them further. If we would have redheads with us in the bar when we were shooting for the first day, we would be ahead of our schedule, but because it didn't work out, so we were a little bit behind and we had to improvise. I guess we planned most of the things pretty well because the footage looked like we wanted to and also we managed to record a lot of footage just spontaneously and it was also successful so we had a great choice of different kind of footage and actually some of the results were surprisingly good.